Hey everybody, Jim Sammons here and welcome to the Kayak Fishing Show live brought to you by Ballas Point Brewing Company as always, although I'm not drinking today. <laughs> I'm uh, drinking water today. Unfortunately, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be right up front with this. If uh, if I make any mistakes today, it's because my mind is a mess. Um, I haven't eaten in three days uh, on some medication and some stuff going on, so I'm not supposed to eat for three days. Get to eat later tonight, maybe. But so anyway, so uh, I've been fumbling around with my head in the clouds for the last uh, couple of days. So anyway, but we are still brought to you by Ballast Point Brewing Company, and uh, we appreciate that. Um, want to, uh, reiterate the stuff we have coming up, uh, on Tuesday. So we do have a special show this coming Tuesday with, uh, Kevin and Bart from, uh, Guy Harvey resort in, uh, Florida. And so we'll be doing a live show with them and uh, we'll actually be giving away a signed, uh, an autographed print by Guy Harvey. So, uh, you're going to want to join us for that. And then next Friday we have Wes Siegler from Siegler Reels, and we will be giving away a reel of your choice. Um, and the thing with uh, the Guy Harvey deal is just to let people know about that place and also the fact that we will be there on Saturday, May 18th, doing their academy. So basically a kayak fishing seminar uh, that uh, you are all welcome to come to. It is a, a paid event, but it is the money goes to a charity. So. Uh, if you are in um, St. Augustine, Florida, and you'd like to join us for that, that should be really fun. It'll be myself, Bart Swab, and a bunch of the guys from the Jackson Kayak Fishing Crew. Um, of course, we've got a great show for you today. Got our good buddy Luther Cyphers from uh, Yak Attack is going to be joining us. Uh, if you want your chance to win two of their AR Rod 2 Rod Holders, we need you to comment like share you know just participate in this thing you know bring on your questions we need the questions to make for the better shows um and of course the more likes comments shares we get uh the more the sponsors like it they want these things out there so they're they come on the shows and uh, give away more cool gear um if uh, you want to be entered though the comments must be made on the kayak fishing show uh with jim salmon's page that's the only way we really um can include them in the raffle so uh, it is a random drawing. So uh, if you do that, this is our first live show that we've done where we are on the Kayak Fishing Show page, the new Kayak Fishing Show group page, which um, we just started a couple days ago. So the, the whole idea behind that is that you get in the group, you will be notified every time we are coming on air. So uh, because the way Facebook works now, a lot of times you don't see what's going on with us. And uh, so if you really want to be notified of what we got going on, join the Kayak Fishing Show group page. This is also our first time doing a true show where we are also broadcasting to uh, YouTube. So really excited to have our viewers from YouTube um, watching this as well. Um, with no further ado, let's bring up my buddy Luther Cyphers. Luther, how you doing, man? Jim, how you doing, buddy? All right. You're, uh, well, it's the East Coast, your time, so you're uh, just finishing up. Well, you never finish up your days this early. No, 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 but you gave me a good excuse today. <laughs> you're one of the hardest working guys I know. Man, you know, it's my hobby, Jim. I love doing it, so it uh, doesn't feel like work most of the time. Some days it does. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. It, there's there's all those headaches. So let's. Uh, we got a few people want to check and just say hello. Uh, Diana, how you doing? Uh, Eric, what's happening? Andrew, how you doing, man? And of course, my good buddy Ulf in Sweden is joining us here. Uh, Brian, how are you? Chuck, you're here, man. <laughs> uh, Daniel, this is getting to be a Friday afternoon ritual. I hope so, and that's what we want. We want people coming here every work, kind of get used to the habit of being here every Friday. Um, you know, there will be times when I'm traveling, I'm on the road where we can't do the live show, but 
for the most part, make this your Friday afternoon or evening ritual, depending on where you are. Uh, Dave, how you doing from Ottawa? Uh, is it still raining up there, man? And Dave, Charles, Dave, beer of the day. Oh, uh, the beer of the day. Like I said, I'm not drinking this week, unfortunately, but uh, I brought up a, a Ballast Point Manta Ray, which is a excellent double IPA. Really, really good beer. So um, we've said our, all our hellos. Um, I, again, if you guys... Uh, want to be entered, please make sure you like, comment, and share, and of course, bring on the questions for Luther. Luther, um, you know, like I said, you, you've been known as the innovator of kayak fishing accessories. I saw a good comment um, just the other day. Uh, one of the guys was rigging up his blue sky, and I think he called it the, uh, the, Legos, of, uh, the Legos of kayak fishing um, or of kayak rigging. Um, I mean, it, you have so many things that work together. I mean, everything, my blue sky is 100% rigged. Everything, my fish finders, everything basically is put on through Yak Attack products. You, you know, you've come a long way since the uh, Vizzy Carbon Pro flag. Yeah, yeah, or even the original Vizzy Pole before that, the little the little tube with the light glued in it. Yeah, man, it's 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 been fun. I mean, this is a, this industry, the platform, the kayak platform, it's a playground. I mean, there's so much versatility that you need out of a small space. It really does kind of lead itself to needing those kind of interchangeable solutions that, um, yeah. And I've heard that, that phrase before kind of, you know, like Legos and that's really what it's all about is being able to configure the boat, not only for yourself, but also for changing conditions. You know, you might go out one day, you know, targeting one species and one type of water, one type of conditions. Another day you might be totally different. So we've always tried to build that, versatility into all the things that we design. Well, I mean, I think it goes all the way back to the, the mighty mount, right? Uh, then the gear track. And from there, I mean, just having everything be able to being loaded onto there um, has made kayak rigging so stinking easy. And it's funny how many people have said that they're glad that we invented the track. Well, we didn't invent the track. You know, T-Tracks have been around for a long time. And even on kayaks, um, wilderness systems and native both had tracks that predated anything Yak Attack did. What we brought to the table was the attachment method where the T-bolt screws up into the bottom of the accessory. And we just made, I'd say we made tracks really usable. And once they were usable, people wanted to be able to put them on more surfaces and things like that. And, and that's where the Mighty Mount came in. Um, you know, and then the gear tracks and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a cool system, man. It, it's, it's, it's lived now for, you know, eight years or something like that. And just continue, we just continue to find more and more uses, more and more ways to do it. Now it's standard equipment on a lot of kayaks. So it makes it really easy for us at Yak Attack to just keep cranking out solutions that work for everybody. Yeah, well, I mean, we're coming from a guy who was around when basically we made all our own stuff. I mean, I don't know yeah. if you know this, but back in the day, I used to make rod holders for kayaks. We had aluminum plates that we had anodized and threaded and all that, but they were still using PVC for the tube. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I said that's that's kind of dating myself back some time, but like I said, this the 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 ability to go in there and still. I mean, a lot of things about kayaking, I think, is is the rigging. And so a lot of that is fun. It's figuring out how you want to rig it. Um, but having, you're, having to reinvent the wheel all the time and having to figure out how to do it, you guys have made it so a guy can still rig his boat the way he wants, but you've just made it easier so he's not having to manufacture every single little piece. Yeah, it's funny. That DIY element, I mean, that's really what – that's really what gave birth to Yak Attack is, you know, me and my buddy Bob that I started kayak fishing with, we're DIY kind of people, you know, so it started with that. I mean, that original busy pole was just a DIY project, but yeah, I mean, not everybody wants to spend a lot of time doing that. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of people that still do and they still can, you know, all the, the PVC is still there, you know what I mean? Um, but we just want to try to, give that premium, you know, off the shelf, but really designed for the purpose solution. And I, and I think, I feel like that's really what 
probably what Yak Attack has brought to the table from a design standpoint is, you know, we, we've designed things for the in, environment. So, um, yeah, but from that same DIY mindset, you know, and, you know, people say, well, how do you know when a product is right? It's like, well, if anything, I'd say we're kind of like professional average people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if it works for us, if we think it's cool, it's probably going to work good for other people too. You know, we're, we're not disconnected. You know, a lot of times companies get, get too big and they get well, like, and you, you guys are so connected and believe me, if, if something isn't right, I'm sure that people let you know right away. They do. And, and the beauty of it, and I've seen you guys do this is you guys have the ability to react to that. If somebody comes back with you with a comment and say, Hey, this isn't quite right. This isn't right. You guys are able to make that adjustment on the fly. Yeah. So, it's funny if you watch our growth. If, if if you saw the curve of our growth, it was you know it was going up, going up. In one year, it was pretty much fl almost flat, and then it started going up again. Well, that flat year, we're developing the ability and the system for building tooling in our own shop. So, you know, with the type of molding and stuff that we do, that's a big barrier, uh, a big cost barrier, but also. Once you're locked into a set of tooling, it's really hard to make the decision to, you know, a, a simple product might be a thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar investment for a small business. That's hard enough to start with. But then, if it's not right, you have to go back and spend another ten or fifteen or whatever to get it fixed. A lot of companies can't make that decision because you know there is a huge cost barrier. So, we felt like if we could make it in house and we could find a better way of doing it that it would give us more, not only more control over the products that we were selling, but the freedom to scrap tooling. <laughs> you know, when, when we did the lock and load system, we scrapped at least two, I think it was three sets of tooling. And I'm not talking about one tool, I mean sets for everything that worked together because yeah. the performance wasn't where we wanted it. And yeah, I was there when you guys were, we, I mean, we were still working with uh, 3D printed lock and load stuff when I was there and uh and yeah. stuff and, and again you were still like okay well this isn't quite right and and you guys had it I, I think you guys had it just like just ready to go and I, I don't maybe it wasn't the lock and load or, but uh, you guys had something just ready to go and then something came up it's like nope that's not quite right and you were able to jump back in and tweak it if if I didn't feel like I had the support of my design team I would have been worried about some hooded dude with a baseball bat meeting me outside my house with <laughs> Because it was, and I know it was a frustrating process because I don't know, man, you just know when it's right. And Murphy's law lives in manufacturing. Murphy's law lives in products. And if it's that one little thing that's just nagging at you and you let, and it's tell, you know, in your gut, it's like, it's not quite there and you let it go anyway, it's going to come back. It's going to come back to get you. And, you know, we were late with that. We had a situation where we had to build a lot of products fast. Um, so that we had a mailing solution so that we had something to offer. And, you know, it was tough to go back to our customers and say, well, we're delayed again. You know, it was, it was tough to do that. Plus it was a lot of work, but as I told the team, I said, you know, we can, we can spend the extra two or three months to do it right. And we'll be forgiven for that. There's people who might not like it, but we'll be forgiven for that. But if we knowingly put something out there that's not ready for market, shame on us. You know, we can't do that. And and I'm, I'm really happy with the team. I mean, they've always stood behind. I've made a lot of bad decisions over the years, you know, but they've all, you know, as I say, one flawed vision is better than 10 flawed visions. So, you know, the team's always stuck behind the vision and we've always come together to make, turn it into its best version of itself. Um, I can't, I can't even say enough about what Yak Attack is like as a company. Uh, it's a, it's a unicorn, you know, the, <laughs> what we have there is something that, you know, I can't even say we, there was a strategy to set out and build, but the pieces and the people that came together to make that little thing, it's just, it's, it's a, it's an absolute unicorn. Um, but we we do have those people. We do have that team. We do have that mission. And I need to have that, that mentality is so important. And I, and I see the same thing, like with my friends, uh, you know, Wes Siegel over at Siegel Reels. You know, he's had the same thing. People are like, you know, what is taking so long on this reel? And, and it's like, well, would you rather have me put it out wrong or would you rather wait and get it right? You know, and and yeah, there are people who get impatient, but 
in the long run, you know, it, taking the time to put out the right product is always going to be the smartest decision. Um, yeah. So what if you piss off a couple of people, at least, you know, you feel comfortable with the product you put in your hands. And, and that's what I respect so much about you and, and those guys, because that's what they do. We do have a couple of uh, questions here and comments. I just wanted to throw them up here. Sean, how are you, man? Thanks for joining us every week. Uh, Jody, love the Friday kayak talks. Thanks for joining us, Jody. Uh, Eric had a question. Does Yak Attack plan creating an in-place kayak cart that you can transition from land to water and back without removal? Um, no immediate plans. There, there are some technical challenges with that uh, that I think if you don't solve them just right, again, it, it goes back to that thing that just keeps coming back. Uh, the way that kayaks are designed and the materials they're made out of and and as heavy as they can get, especially loaded down with gear, shock yeah. waves that you get rolling them around. To me, doing anything other than putting something under the boat right now is is pretty tough with these bigger kayaks. I think it's one of those things that if we ever found the right design that we thought would be robust and and you know that would be the right solution, we'd be we'd be interested in it. The other big challenge for us with with carts is. Um, you, it's it's nearly impossible to find a a wheel that's made in the USA. Wow. Uh, we've stuck by that, you know, the made in the USA thing pretty tight. So, you know, I think for us a prerequisite to doing anything like that would be, you know, finding something that either we could manufacture or that we could find that was manufactured domestically. And, you know, the wheels aren't easy to, you know, tire stuff like that. It's not easy to to produce. So um yeah, I would say not on the immediate horizon, but don't ever count us out either. Uh, Dave Thompson has a comment. Praise out to Luther, his family, and Yak Attack for the tens of thousand dollars they have raised for veterans in their annual tournament. And that's – is that coming up? Yeah, it is, man. It's uh, – I want to say it's like the 17th somewhere that weekend. It's, it's Armed Forces Day weekend. And what a cool event. I mean, you know, I think this year we – I think it was 200 – entries that were available and they sold out in I think it was a couple of hours. That's amazing. That yeah, is absolutely amazing. And, so, and then people come out there, Jim, and it's like, you know, you're not competing for anything. You know, it's everything's raffled. You know, there's the, I, I say that. I mean, um for years Rob Choi has done his fish prints or we'll have some kind of you know cool thing, but it's not like you're competing for big money or a kayak or, you know, anything that has, you know, kind of like retail value type stuff, but it's, it's about, it's about a good cause. And it's about, it's so funny. So many people say, Oh, I'm just here for the food and they mean it. Like they're literally, that, that's the coolest. I've, I've heard about the food at this event. Yeah. Just hanging out, having a good time. You know, we, we cook, uh, we do ribs and ribeyes Friday night, Saturday night, we do pulled pork and, um, you know, my wife and my mom and all the ladies at Yak Attack and, and a bunch of guys from the team, from the fishing team, um, all come together. Dave comes and we, we, we just, we serve the, the community there, you know, and we have a really, really good time. So it's a special event. And then people show up with their, you know, their twenties and their hundreds for raffle tickets, because they know that this is something for heroes in the water. And, you know, every year it's at least $20,000 that, you know, just, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, anyway, I, I kind of, in some ways I wish we could do it in a bigger venue so we could have more people. But and, and that's mostly because I hate it when people don't make it in, especially if they've been there for a few years and, and they just didn't make it. And this, I mean, this year, two hours, that was a tough window. But on the flip side, I think one of the things that makes the thing that the event as cool as it is, is it is small enough to be kind of an intimate setting. You get to talk to everybody. Right. You know, we can serve everybody. All the Yak Attack employees will line up in the food serving line and, you know, kind of, you know, we serve our customers every day from behind the scenes, but it's an opportunity to do it face to face. It's just, it's a cool experience for everybody. That's, that's awesome. I, I got to get out there one time. I know uh, Corey, Ruth and I were talking and um, my work schedule, the way things were going, it's like, I, I wanted to try and squeeze it in. And then it turned out I was going to be in Florida when that's going on. So it didn't happen this year, but someday, someday I will make You should it. do that. Um, you, you wouldn't regret it. Uh, there was, here we go. 
A question from Dave Fowler, Wicked product is there or will there be different colors in your products? You know, not immediately. I mean, that's a tough one. It, it, you end up, it's kind of like if you ever, if you can imagine what it would be like to, to be a, you know, a clothing company, you've got four shirts in six sizes, 24 SKUs, you know what I mean? And that gets really hard on dealers. Um, what, what I found is customers like a lot of options, but it's really hard logistically for, for the distribution network. So right. that's stuff, stuff that we've considered. Um, if we ever did things like that, I think we do it in limited run or something like that. So it wasn't, you know, it didn't, you know, make things too hard. The other thing is we're in an industry where between the kayak accessories, you know, other brands of kayak accessories and all the other things that, that kayak shops carry, you're always limited on shelf space. So you want to make sure that customers have the options they need to fill their needs. And sometimes by the time you get that shelf space occupied, there's may not be enough room, you know, to have right. what's in there. So, you know, I think some color accents on certain type products would be really cool. Um, but so far we've stuck to, you know, trying to keep it simple for everybody. Uh, that totally makes sense. Uh, Dan has a comment, great products and even better customer service. And, and of course, that's Thanks, always Dan. important. Um, Jay Brown, I like the fact that you involve the average Joe in beta testing new products. Yeah, and I've seen that in the past. You throw the word out to to guys and say, hey, we, we've got something. we got a limited number of these. If uh, some guys use that type of product, you know, do you want to test it for us? Yeah, it's it's cool. It's a, it's a really good way to get a lot of feedback in a lot of different conditions relatively quickly. It's not always, you know, some products it makes more sense than others and sometimes the timing and so forth it makes more sense than other times. But yeah, when the, when the conditions are right, we love doing that. And we, you know, we like interacting with the consumer anyway, you know, the consumer, well, that's the same people that are, you know, our buddies that we, you know, that we fish with or that we run into at tournaments or at shows or whatever. So it's always cool to, you know, I don't know. It's always cool to cool to do stuff like that in a in a team, and and that's you know our customers in a lot of ways are our team. Yeah, for sure. Um, here we go. This is actually our first comment from YouTube, and it's very cool because hello nice. from Greece, Yak Attackers. That <laughs> is very cool. Awesome. Yeah, like I said and that's one thing I, I say it every week, but I mean I love the fact that we get we get. Uh, viewers from all over the world on this channel and uh, it, it's it's pretty cool i mean like i said my buddy ul from sweden was on here uh we generally have people from scotland and england and you know it's all at portugal and, and this i think this might actually be the first one i've seen from greece but uh, that is very nice. very cool and thanks for joining us i have no idea what the name is uh, do you know how to pronounce that name i don't <laughs> Uh, Jeremy, thanks for joining us. Uh, glad you could uh, watch the show as well. Uh, Scott Kraken fits that description. Well, I'm not really sure what you're talking about, Scott, but gotta love the Kraken. <laughs> um, so, I mean, the, the, the things that have, have come out lately, I mean, here's the, here's the AR rod holder. Um, I'm going to drop that question off of there, comment off of there so we can see it a little bit better. There we go. So there's the AR uh, rod holder, which uh, I've been using lately and, and really like it. I mean, I like the, the movable gimbal pin on there. But I think you guys really, 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 really landed on something with the lock and load system. Um, what was the what was the inspiration between behind that thing? I mean, it, it's I, I, I hate you know, we, we hate the word game changer, but it certainly is a rigging changer. Um, I mean, it's so simple. It's so versatile. It's so, I mean, I, I have these things on the side of my, uh, Orion cooler. Um, they're all over my kayaks. It, it's an amazing system. Yeah. That man, you talk about a team effort. I mean, this is, this is a, uh, product. It, you know, this was part of the original, you know, the, the, the Omega system was developed. Or, or the lock and load system was developed at the same time as the Omega rod holder. And the rod holder was relatively easy and we had that way early on, but the mounting system for it, you know, we were, we were under the gun to do something quickly, but 
it was so hard to solve. I mean, we had, we had some things that kind of worked and this is about the time that, you know, I went from doing most of the product design to, we had a new extremely talented designer named Dan Newman that came in and, you know, I, I hit a wall. I, I just, you know, I tried a bunch of different things and we had, gosh, if you could see the, 3D prints of all the different things we tried and we knew kind of functionally what we wanted it to do, but we, I, it was just, it was just a really tough one to solve. And, um, you know, it got to the point I, I handed it off to Dan and, um, it was cool. Dan and I bounced that thing back and forth. Like I said, I, I'm lucky Dan didn't hire somebody to take me out. <laughs> I kept, I, you know, I just, it, it was, you know, we kept going through and, and he made these quantum leaps but it just, you know, I remember at one part of the conversation was, well, it's too many pieces. We need one less piece. And he's like, are you freaking serious? <laughs> you know, but but he, he did it, you know, and and I, I told him afterwards, I, you know, we were joking about another product. And I was like, you know how it is, man. My job is to ask for the impossible and your job is to figure out how to do it. And, you know, Dan said a really cool thing. He's like, you know, he's like, after the lock and load system, I trust that process, you know, and, and. And I do too. He, Dan's one of these guys that given enough, you know, time and criteria, I, I don't know what he can't do. You know what I mean? He, he just, we haven't found that limit yet. So it was a cool, it was a really cool thing. It was a good collaborative effort. The team was really patient with, you know, me continuing to hold out for a little bit more and a little bit more. And we got it in the end, you know, so it was cool. It was a good. No, one. It, it, it's a it's a great product. Again, I mean, for for anybody who's not had a good look at it, you know, the way I'm going to do one thing really quick here. I'm going to drop our name. Nobody needs to say our names anymore. We, they know who we are by now. Uh, but if you haven't seen this, I mean, it, it drops into the gear track. Push the button here, and it just I'm trying to do it with the wrong hand. And you can lift it. You can adjust it all the angles. If you want to take it off, it just pops off. To put it on the track, you just unscrew it. I mean, it, it's super simple, but so versatile, and it works with so many of your products now. Uh, like I said, my uh, my Blue Sky is 100% rigged with this thing, uh, from my uh, fish finder mounts to the, I think, six rod holders. Uh, everything on my boat is, is done with that new system because it is so easy so versatile and so clean, you know, um, it's, it's a lot better. I think to, to the old days having to drill so many holes in your boat and, and flush mm -hmm. mounts and all that to now, no, if you're going to resell a boat, nobody's going to be too upset if it's covered in gear track. Um, right. people might yeah. be upset if you've drilled a bunch of big holes in it. Yeah. So yeah. I think it, it really, uh, if anything increases the value of that, of that kayak. So um, let's jump into a, a couple more uh, questions over here, uh, Richard or comments. Richard, uh, we're having an event to raise money for Heroes on the Water here in the central coast of California on June 1st at Estero Bay Challenge. Richard, um, if you have any a link to that or anything, shoot it to me on here and I'll pop it on the screen as well. Um, Andrew, how are you, man? Good to see you. Uh, Dan Fields, hi Luther. See you in two weekends. Does that mean he's coming out for the tournament? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wade King, you have kayak, or I'm sorry, you have yak attack fans in North Dakota. Very Thanks, Wade. Cool product. You got you got fans all over. I'm sure. Are you are you sold? I mean, we're we see here that you know we have fans all over the world. Uh, is yak attack available all over the world? Yeah, it is. We, we, you know, we've continued to work on improving that distribution. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're in, we're on, you know, multiple continents and a lot of countries. We're, I, I'm, I think we're in almost all the European countries. Um, we just got some solid distribution and, and, uh, Australia. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's good. I mean, Australia has a big kayak fishing community. As well yeah, as New and, Zealand and, 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 and Europe is really growing too. Um, but getting the right channels for for uh, that is difficult because of the freight cost, importation cost, that kind of stuff. Duties. Yeah. So we've but we've continued to work on that, and 
Uh, I think especially with a lot of the the newer products that you know are just super unique in the marketplace. You know, they're they're getting a lot more um, interest from overseas, and and we've been able to export a lot more in the last year than we did years previous. Uh, Mark Berenger, he's a San Diego guy, so he loves the AR rod tube. Uh, I think I fished with Mark. He has the um, the L two fish. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't think. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah, fished yeah. with Mark. I came out there. I think I came out to see you, Jim, and I ended up with a few hours. And I put on Facebook like, if anybody wants to go fishing, hit me up. And Mark called me. We went out and, and fished for a little while. So uh, yeah. very cool. Uh, Eric, one hand operation on the lock and load is a huge value, yeah, and that's very true. I mean, particularly when you're in a kayak and you're kind of reaching behind you. You know, getting to a two-hand type deal. Um, I mean, I'll I'll tell you firsthand from the the other ones, which was a huge improvement to begin with, being able to pull the pin, lift out your rod holder, and adjust it. Uh, but that was still a two-hand operation. Um, this this I said these things are are rigging changers. Um, like I said I'm gonna stay away from game changer. And the thing uh, that's cool that a lot of people don't realize either until you show them, but when you squeeze that button and it lifts up, it's completely secure. Like it can rotate, but even if you get a big hit while you're in that, you can't remove it. Right. It's like more. In so case. I, I put the button. You can see it. If you can kind of see it, get it in front of the camera. Let you can kind of see how it's jumping up as I push that button. Whoops. I have the other parts loose, but I can't pull it out. Yeah. I pull it out. Even if the fish hit it. Out that way. And actually, I mentioned scrapping tooling a couple of times on that thing. The last thing we did, we had it ready to go, but we noticed that if you accidentally bumped it with something, that trigger would flip open. Okay. So to the drawing board again and added the little safety trigger under it, so you've got to reach under, you know, to make it to, to uh, make it release. But anyway, yeah. I'm to make sure. So uh, for people who want to see the products, of course, you can go to yakattack.com or yakattack.us. I know that's still out there. Um, it's a huge website, all the products. Um, I mean, well, I can bring that up really quick. There's a few of the products there. Uh, there's the AR tube, uh, the throttle mount, which I have actually am using on my Blue Sky for the dual Torquitos, the, the new Omega Pro. You guys have a uh, the really nice... Uh, mounting systems for the fish finders all the way up to the big axioms. Um, so, I mean, like I said, you, you're going to find lots of product. Unfortunately, you have to look at a picture of Chad Hoover. That should be a picture <laughs> of <Jim Hammond. laughs> uh, Talk about Chad Hoover, man. He's doing great things for the sport, man. Um, oh, man. I know you guys are involved in that whole FLW um, tournament. I think that's going on. That might be going on today. Yeah, there's there's an event. I guess it started yesterday through Sunday. Actually, we've got some guys headed to it now. Um, but yeah, what Chad's done, man, it's just amazing. I'll never forget when we had our first Vizzy poll. Chad was president of Tidewater Kayak Anglers Association in Tidewater, Virginia, and he was stationed in Norfolk. And I reached out to him through that because I wanted him to basically beta test to evaluate this product we were working on. And he, and he calls me and, and he called me from Germany. Uh, he, he was actually, he, he had been deployed, which I didn't know that. I didn't know him at the time, but, you know, we talked on the phone for an hour or so and immediately became friends. We've been friends ever since. But I remember on that first phone call, the first time I ever talked to him, and, that, and Jim, you remember this, a lot of people watching may not, but back then, this is 2008, 2009 time frame. It was kayak fishing was a very coastal thing. You oh, yeah. A yeah. lot of freshwater kayak fishing. And Chad started talking to me about the miles of coastline or, or shoreline versus coastline and, and about the benefits of, of kayak fishing for bass and, you know, about this. Organ and it, it, I mean, I'm like probably in his kayak bass fishing form. I'm probably member number like four. <laughs> because he, you know, he told me about that he had his book coming out and he had this vision for what kayak bass fishing as a sport and also as an organization was going to become it's incredible i mean it's all happened and you know and it's been a tough road I, I know how difficult it's been to make all these things happen and you know it's ups and downs and 
and learning. It's no different than running any other kind of company, but the things that he's made happen are just simply stunning. Yeah, no, there's, there's no doubt that, I mean, to have that KBF national championship, what that has become yeah. uh, to now be involved with the FLW. I mean, it's huge props to him. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, Chad throws a lot of shit out there and sees what sticks and he's been, but he keeps at it. He just keeps pounding and pounding and pounding and, and makes stuff stick. And, yeah. uh, you know, I said huge props to what, what he has done to, to help grow this sport. Um, because I am a coastal guy. That's where I see it. You know, um, you know, the, the, the green bass are not a huge appeal to me, but they're fish and I love to fish. And he has done so much to expand this sport that, uh, I mean, I, I have tons of respect for what he's done over there and the fact that you're involved in that. And like I said, um, your involvement, uh, as a sponsor of that, I, I think is that, I mean, what, what exactly is your, is your, with the FLW? Yeah, so so the FLW KBF deal, um, Yak Attack is is a presenting sponsor. So um, you know we're we're really excited about that because a lot of our a lot of the stuff that people are using on kayaks, they're just as usable on other types of watercraft. You know, so for us that's an opportunity to reach a whole another customer uh, base that may not know who we are currently. So we're we're super excited about that. Um, and just to be involved with the the seeing the sport of kayak fishing kind of merge with you know this professional fishing, and I'm sure there's going to be some crossover participation. That's a funny. I mean, I've heard people have different mixed feelings about that, but what I t- you know when I hear the kayak bass fishing guys talk about you know the impact of of, of pro anglers fishing you know alongside them in tournaments. My opinion is simple. Don't sell yourself short, guys. Some of the best bass anglers in this country are fishing out of kayaks. Um, they and, and they can stack up against anybody, you know. So I, I'm really excited to see. I'm sure there's going to be some overlap there. I'm really interested to see that unfold. I think the world's going to be shocked by the quality of angler that's fishing out of kayaks right now. Um, and it's just a cool thing to be part of. Well, I, I think uh... – to to that point you know there's a lot of very very good kayak anglers who couldn't afford that you know ridiculous you know hundred thousand dollar bass boat and and now to bring them all together on on that playing field uh i I think you're right i think it's they're going to be amazed at the quality of angler that they're going to see because there are some darn good kayak bass anglers well the kayak puts you in a position that you have to get the most out of every cove. You know, you have to get the most out of it. You can't just power fish your way through, you know, and and I think to me that creates a better angler. I think, you know, it, even like when my son and I started kayak fishing together, he immediately, you know, before that I had a John boat, he immediately became a better angler because now he's thinking for himself where he wants to position his boat, where he wants to make his next cast, you know, and then seeing what happens when he does that. And, you know, that process of learning and, and, and cause and effect. So I think kayak anglers have a unique, you know, a unique environment and a unique set of challenges. It's like training with 10 pound ankle weights on to some degree, you get a lot stronger. And I think they're stronger than, anybody realizes well yeah and i've always said that you know there's this you're you're kind of forced to stop and smell the roses if you will you know you can't like as you said you can't power fish you have to learn how to fish an area efficiently and and cover that entire area because you're not going to go you're not you're not going to pound this area for five minutes and go okay well this isn't happening and haul but you got to make this area work yep you know, um, got uh, Dave. Uh, will you guys be making universal transducer mounts for the dry pod that you can lower and raise? Um, right now, for transducer mounting, we've got the switchblade that goes over the side of the boat. There's so many different pods out there that becomes complicated to try to make. You know, stuff like that that's super universal. Um, so no, not right now. I mean, I think I think there are a lot of a lot of the kayak manufacturers now have really good electronics pod options and you could just mount the transducer to the bottom of it. Um, for somebody who doesn't want to do that or they want something that's more removable or that they can move from boat to boat, 
the cell block and switchblade combo is is a really good option. But, yeah, the, the cell block's great. On the radar. I use the cell block. Um, a lot of times I'll use the, the cell block and switchblade uh, as my travel setup. So I can, you know, when I'm going from boat to boat to boat and being able to move that around, it, it, it's a really nice setup. And that switchblade um, hydrodynamically is so much, so much nicer than what's out there. Um, I mean, it really, really cuts through the water. So that's, that's a, that's a really nice product. Um, let's see. There was a, da, 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 uh, Scott, it, oh, back to the Kraken release. Kraken release being held off until it was right. Matches description of Luther not wanting to release. Yeah. And, and that was, you know, we spent a lot of time working on the Kraken, uh, to get everything just the way we wanted. Um, I still like that long boat. And unfortunately my long boat has been discontinued because not enough people wanted the long boat. Uh, but I'm a, I'm a, a long boat guy, but they, they still are, are available in the 13 six and uh, it's still, it's a great boat. It's what we use when we do a lot of shoots, when we have to, you know, be transporting via boat and all that. So uh, here's another great one. Marco from Italy. How you doing, man? Uh, again, love to see the people from all over the world. Okay, well, I got to throw this one out there because I knew this one was going to come, Luther. Any plans for some camera mounts for the lock and load? Of course. <laughs> Any plans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we're, yeah, I mean, um, you know, we, we were, you know, we, we had to do something different with camera mounts. Um, we haven't had anything for a couple of years, but uh, yeah, I, I'd expect to see X Tech cam camera mounts reappear and, and uh, I think kind of like the lock and load system, I think it'll be worth the wait. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of, of worth the wait and, and everything, and I'll just ask this straight up. Uh, what are your plans for iCast? Are we going to see anything new and cool? And you don't have to tell us what it is. I'm just wondering if there's anything new coming up or. Uh... Yeah, we've got some stuff on, on the docket for iCast. I mean, like I said earlier, I mean, part of what we've realized in the last few years is that Yak Attack products are, they're, they're suitable for a lot more environments than just kayak fishing. You know, the, whereas a lot of other products maybe were, were born for boats and adapted to, to kayaks. I think that's very true. <laughs> very, yeah. true. In, in our case, we've got a lot of products that were born for kayaks, but are adaptable to other environments. So I cast, I expect we're going to, you know, we're going to explore some of that uh, crossover opportunity. Um, but of course, I mean, I, we, we've, I don't think we've ever made an I cast or an outdoor retailer or anything like that without having some cool new stuff. So um, I would definitely expect to see, you know, I would expect to see some new Yak Tech stuff out there. That's very cool. Um, yeah. And to, to, to Luther's point and this gear track, and I'll go ahead and whoops. Get caught up in my wires here. The gear track, I have this, a lot of pieces of this on our boat. Um, I have across the back so we can put rod holders at the back of the boat. I mean, we cup holders. I mean, I, I've got a lot of gear track on our boat. It is just a, a super versatile uh, piece of equipment combined with all the other gear. What, what's the uh, what's the product you're most excited about or most that, that you've come up with? Is it the, the new lock and load? Yeah, I was going to say the, the product I'm most excited about, I didn't come up with. Dan did, but um, yeah, it's that lock and load system. I think that's yeah. the, the most, the thing about, and you know, I started my career designing machines and I learned early on, you know, you're talking about assemblies that might have, you know, 2,000 pieces or something like that. And I le learned early on that you can keep band-aiding and patchworking things together until they work so something that looks really complicated isn't really a very challenging or elegant design it just means it was patched together until it started working so what to me what's so impressive about the lock and load system is what it does how much it does as, as smoothly as it does it but it's a simple mechanism and the more functionality you can get out of a really simple mechanism that to me that's that's the in, from a design standpoint that's the standard of excellence and you know what again what dan was able to get out of that and even at the end the whole idea that when you squeeze the trigger it lifts up and automatically disengages 
that wasn't even a requirement. That wasn't even something that was on my radar. That's just, Dan was like, I think I can make this thing where, you know, where it does this. And I'm like, how are you going to do that? <laughs> <And he> like, <laughs> it's like a half a thread. And I'm like, okay, you know, and, and so, but now to me, that's one of the, it's one of the most, from a design standpoint, it, it's it's the the highest reach that we've ever done. Yeah, you know, um, you know, you, you you touched on a point at which, again, you know, because Wes Wes Siegler and I are good friends, and uh, that's always been his thing too. It, it is to make things simple, but to make things simple is oftentimes much more difficult. It's way more difficult. Yeah, and and yeah. and that's what you, you love to see. If it it's simple, if you end up with too many mo moving parts and things, that's just more things that can go wrong. So it, it's it's always I always appreciate those types of design. Uh, Richard, you said you messaged me the link. Why don't you just go ahead and put it in here, and I'll put it on the screen here. Uh, so because um, I don't have Facebook actually even open, because um, that's I try to keep as many things closed while I'm doing these. So they aren't a resource tag. So, so post it on here and I'll, and I'll pop it up. Um, let's see. <laughs> Will you bring back the panfish series of action cams? I would say in some form. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the, those things work really well. Uh, we've got patents on that. You know, it would be a shame to just leave it on the shelf. So yeah, I'd expect you'll see uh, some kind of a reincarnation. I, I, I'm going to say it's probably going to be a, a better version than, than what we started with. But um, yeah, I think you'll see something like that. Um, Zachariah says lock and load is brilliant. I have multiple Omega pros with four and eight inch extensions. And those extensions are great. Like I said, I mean, I used a couple of them to get my uh, fish finder just at the right height on my uh, blue sky. It, it, it's, it's really a, like I said, just a sweet, sweet setup. Edgar, how are you, man? And Edgar loves Yak Attack. Uh, Scott wants to know, what is your next awesome product going to be? <laughs> well, like I said, we've got some stuff on the drawing board um, for the next year. Yak Attack is, is also really um, busy right now. I mean, we're, we're getting ready to move from basically we're right now we're spread over about a square mile in three different buildings um, that total 20,000 square feet. So they're three relatively small buildings two about 5,000, one about 10,000. And we're moving to a new facility in Farmville, Virginia. Uh, it's being renovated now, but um, that's 68,000 square feet. So, in, a, in addition to all the other things going on and this being busy season and all of that, um, you know, we're going to be moving as well. So there's a lot going on. We'll see how much we're able to get ready by ICAST, but we'll definitely have some stuff, but kind of like you've always ex expected from Yak Attack, um, you know, if we can launch it at ICAST, we will. If, if we get something that's, you know, um, out of cycle a little bit, you know, we'll, we'll do that. You know, we'll, we'll, we're, all, we're always very practical in that kind of stuff. So I will say this. I think we have two products coming in the next 12 months that will be, that will register on the Richter scale. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Hence? No? <laughs> it's on the drawing board right behind you. You just won't show up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Martin Jones, sorry if this has been asked. Any plans for Yak Attack to make a fish finder mount that can fit a nine-inch unit? I'm not sure we don't have that with the universal electronics mount. Yeah, I, my, um, I have a nine-inch Axiom, and yeah. uh, it's on one of your universal mounts. Yeah, it's that rectangular plate. It's about it's about that big, and I think if, it, if there's a model that it doesn't fit, by all means, message us and let us know, and we'll take a look at it. But I think right now we cover pretty much anything you would put on a kayak and probably some units that are even bigger than that. Hey, there's a picture of me. I was going to bring up your website. Uh, there's me. Uh, I was just trying to see if I could, uh, of course, I'm trying to navigate your site here. How Jim, I... you're, holding, you're holding a bait fish. I know. It's a bass. Can you believe that? <laughs> um 
Would it be under depth finder mounting? Yeah. Rectangular fish finder mount. It's one of these. Yeah, it's the, uh, it would be the larger of the two, I think. And I'm trying to see if there's a, a picture with a different angle. There we go. So, yeah, um, you use the mount for the fish finder itself and attach it to that mount. And, and that's how I've got mine. Um, I had it sitting in my office, but I think I, I took it down to the boat. Um, but, yeah, so that's th that works with the 9-inch. So, uh, yes, they do have it. Uh, Luther, do you see any value in ICAST being open to the public? I can answer that. Man. No. <laughs> so, so we're going to disagree a little bit. I cast, I don't know, but I think, you know, Chad Hoover, we were talking after one of the shows, a couple, maybe a year or two ago. And he, made, he, he made the comment that it would be cool to take an industry show like that in the last day, open it up to the public, you know, maybe have a fishing tournament around and say, man, what a great idea. And, and something that we would absolutely get behind uh, and most of the people I've talked to have, I don't think it's something that show organizers are thinking about, you know, back, back in the day, those shows were intended to show the industry before showing the public. But today with live streaming and social media, there are no secrets. <laughs> there are no secrets the day before the show, much less right. at the end of the show. So, you know, the ability for, for, you know, we, we're very fortunate that we get to interact with consumers all the time. You know, because we're still, you know, we're, we're a small company, so we're still very integrated. But even for bigger companies, it's an opportunity for them to interact more directly. It's an opportunity for consumers to, you know, meet the, the you know, the people that run the companies or that, you know, even the, the, the some of the pros and the different people that they might would like to meet, see all the products firsthand. To me, it would be a great industry thing. But I think you have to separate the two because there's a lot of business that gets done on those. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that show is so much for us. It's so much about getting business done. So, um, but I, I can I can definitely see your point. Uh, if they did that, the last day, one one extra day. day to the public would be a whole. And you know what? It would probably make the last day pretty exciting. Where the last day of Absolutely. the show a lot of times is just a, a grind, and you're just waiting to get it done. But one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. You know what would happen is everybody would start getting creative about ways to show customer appreciation. And you know what I mean? It would really just ratchet up into a really cool kind of concept. But right now, any of the show organizers or people that I've talked to or that I've heard feedback from, I don't know that. And I, I'm not even talking about ICAST. I'm talking about in general, you know, paddle sport retailer, ICAST, you know, outdoor retailer, any of those. Um, but I think it would be super cool. Yeah. No, no, I, I can totally see your point on that. Um, like I said, I just wouldn't want it every day because it, for us, you know, it's meetings after meetings and yeah. free beer at five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy says, funny, I thought of Siegler when he mentioned simple design too. Yeah, it said it's. Um, what? If a dog wore pants, would it wear them on back two legs? Or all four and why? <laughs> okay. Uh, Aaron says, please bring back the panfish. Having two lengths to choose from would be stellar, especially with the lock and load feature. I'm, I'm really looking forward to whatever. I know what you guys will come up will, will be awesome. And being able to have it on that lock and load system is amazing. Um Zachariah, will the AR tubes go completely vertical like the older style tube? Yeah. That's completely vertical or completely horizontal or wherever you want it. it it's it's a pretty small index there. So mm -hmm. it, 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 the, the ability to change the angles on that, make sure I keep it in the, in the screen, but yeah. So that it's completely vertical if you want it. Um, <laughs> Scott says, I guess we will wait for the earthquake. <laughs> I'm waiting. Of course, I'm in San Diego. We get earthquakes. Uh, <laughs> Too soon, huh? Yeah. 
Uh, Bill, Bill DeMong, love your products. Thanks, Bill. Any plans on being in Ohio, Luther, from Britain? Not right now. That's something for the last couple of years I've been wanting to do is try to get out more and travel more. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a glutton for punishment. And I keep, you know, I keep getting myself in this stuff that keeps taking my time. So um, it'll be a bit. But at some point in time, I would really like to be in a position to, to get around a little more. Well, having this company and uh, Bonafide Kayaks, I'll throw it out there. He's got Bonafide Kayaks as well. Um, and, uh, I mean, like I said, you're, you're one of the hardest working people I know. And I'm surrounded by some of the hardest working people I know. It's, it's, it's incredible. It, you know, it's climbing is, is for me has always been fun, you know, trying to get to that next level, trying to achieve that next thing, but it's really not a lot of fun to do alone. And it's also not a lot of fun to do with a bunch of people trudging behind you wondering, okay, what's next? You know, but with a group that's exciting, that's excited, that's hardworking, you know, that, that the, the whole journey is a positive impact on them. You know, their careers are growing, you know, they're supporting their families. They're everybody's proud of what we're doing. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's it's really a lot of fun. So, yeah, I mean, I can't say anymore. I'm the hardest working guy in our businesses because every day there's somebody somewhere that or four people or, or 40 people that, that are, you know, making it really hard to outwork them. Well, and you have surrounded yourself with, uh, with great people and, and, you know, you got John and, and, and your daughters, you know, and everybody putting in their, in their hard work to make sure that both of those businesses are, are running. And, and from all accounts, everything uh, that we see, I mean, it's, it's just keeps keeps going up you know um and like i said it, it's comes a lot it's come a long way from that original flagpole on the back of a kayak yeah and it doesn't have to be easy it just has to be worth it that, that, that's how i feel about the climb you know people climb mount everest for the sake of achieving it you know so for the team it's it's our climb is not an easy one but as long as it's worth it to them as long as they're doing it because they want to and they're happy to be doing it um you know, that's all, that's all you can ask for. Uh, Andrew has a question here. Do you have anyone in the UK, Ireland stocking Yak Attack products? We do. I don't, I don't actually probably on our dealer locator, you could find it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that covers international. I don't remember the distributors names off the top of my head, but I know we do have a presence in the UK. Okay, Britton, I'm going to ask you to, uh, uh, I, I don't understand the question. Why is the Liska so slept on? Um, I don't really know what you mean. The Liska, I assume you mean the Jackson Kayak Liska Kayak. I have fished out of that thing. It's super light and nimble. I really like that boat, but I, I'm not following the question. <laughs> yeah, we get a lot of uh, a lot of crazy ones here. Um, anything else on this website? You know, actually, I wanted. To, I had something else of yours sitting right here. Where did I put? Oh. Just, I got some of your, your tie down straps here. Um, they're, they're bomber. I mean, I've got another set that I'm actually got on my trailer. Uh, what makes these so much better? Cause they are. That's <laughs> I mean, a good I, question. I straight up, They are, but it's hard to say, look at a strap and go, what makes this thing better? Yeah. It's basically there's, there's two things. One, obviously oversized bumper. So, you're not going to damage your boat or your car or whatever with the buckle. Um, but the other one is the webbing itself. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's multiple stronger than most of the webbing that's out there. And, and you know how, you know how cam straps after a couple of years in the sun, you pull them and it makes like the little cloud of dust. <laughs> yeah. And they're real, real stiff. Well, that's the UV breaking down UV from the sun, breaking down the fibers these cam straps after years they'll still you know how have, have you noticed they have a really silky kind of feel to yeah them? yeah so after years they'll still feel like that um you know of course salt and stuff like that could get in there and make it feel stiff but the fibers themselves are not going to get stiff so uv so, resistance the strength all of the above is superior to there there may be one or two others that use those level of materials but 
the reason that we're basically twice the price of most of the can straps you see out there is because of the materials that we use, and it's absolutely a difference. Yeah, no, and, and until you've been standing on the top rail of your truck and tightening down a strap and had it snap and you fall flat off the side of it, yeah, which I have. Luckily, there was a bush behind me, so I fell through the bush. But uh, until you have that happen, um, it's sometimes not evident why you need to have good quality straps. But, uh, you know, it, I've known guys who have had kayak straps break and have them go flying down the freeway. And the last thing you want to do is send a kayak through somebody's windshield when they're driving down the road. So it's well worth investing in the, um, in the better quality straps. Um, yeah, you, you always end up replacing them after a few years. So eventually you're kind of even anyway, you know what I mean? It's, but John Hipshire did a video, I think it's on the Akatak channel where he, where he did that, you know, he, he took strands out of typical cam strap and just basically snapped them. And then he took strands out of the Akatak cam straps. And it was to the point, like, it's going to cut your finger off, <laughs> you know, like trying to, trying to, trying to tie knot and braid, you know, without gloves on. I mean, it, it, it it's, it's extremely, they're extremely strong. Um, just two more quick comments. Cause we, we were already over an hour here. Uh, Jeremiah Slavi from Massachusetts was able to find the products in Germany. Couldn't believe nice. they had the adapters. Yeah. That's really cool. And, and like you said, there is a lot of kayak anglers, uh, hardcore kayak anglers in uh, Europe. I mean, yeah, like, it, it was cool. cool. I got to go to Canoe Mesa for the first time and, you know, was able to meet a lot of, you know, kayak anglers from, from Europe and learn about the industry over there and the sport over there and how it's growing and evolving. It was really cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I've got, so I've made some very, very good friends over in Europe um, through kayak fishing and it, it's amazing. Just a hard, and they are hardcore. I mean, they, they yeah. are hardcore kayak anglers. Um, Joey, hi Luther and Jim excited to join, to be joining the climb <laughs> yeah, attack team. So Joey is our newest design engineer. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Joey starts in, he could probably tell us. I think it's. I think it's a week. Um, so yeah, he'll be joining the team. Um, and actually, some of that, some of that ICAST stuff that everybody's asking about, Joey will be working on. Oh, so very cool. I'm looking forward to getting Joey on board. Very cool. And Peter Mayer, thanks for the great products. And I'm gonna drop it at that because we have run over an hour already, as always, flew by. Luther, I can't thank you enough for joining us here. Uh, once again, people want to see the products. It is at yakattack.com uh, and bonafide.com, I guess. <laughs> Bonafide kayaks. Um, <laughs> uh, but thank you so much, Luther, for all Thanks, your Jim. shows and you know everything you guys have done for, for us over the years. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, we got to try and get out fishing again this year. It's been too long. The last time we yes. just was in puerto rico all my really big fish i've caught with jim salmon so let's go do that oh i'd love to hear that too man <laughs> actually well, i, I want to say my biggest fish where you were talking about that cracking 15 i think i was in the 15 when i caught that big tarpon. you were you were on the on the big tarpon in puerto rico yeah. so that, that's a that's a good point to end on biggest fish you ever caught was with jim salmons absolutely <laughs> <laughs> take care luther all right buddy take care well, thanks everybody for joining us here. Remember our shows are brought to you by Ballast Point Brewing Company. And of course, all of our other great sponsors for the shows. Um, remember again, next Tuesday, we have a special edition of the show with the guys from the Guy Harvey Resort. And then next Friday, we will have um, Wes Siegler from Siegler Reels with us. Um, my mind is nuts again as i explained earlier in the show that my head's not really clear right now but um yeah so if you are going out on the water please remember to always wear your pfd and keep your paddle right side up you take care